Good evening and welcome to the webinar. My name is Roisin White and I'm a communications executive here at Fingo County Council. I'll be your host for tonight's webinar, which is part of the public consultation for the Royal Canal Urban Greenway. The Royal Canal Urban Greenway is a proposed high quality greenway route, which will serve Castlenock, Blanchardstown, Clonsilla, Coolmine and the wider Dublin 15 area. It will extend to the Fingal County border where it will meet with the Kildare section of the Royal Canal Greenway, which stretches on through the Midlands and out to the west of Ireland. The Royal Canal Urban Greenway is envisaged to be a flagship scheme for recreation and tourism in the county, with the potential to enhance the local economy, ease commuting and improve linkage across the Dublin 15 area. Tonight we'll present the emerging preferred route for this scheme. This is the second stage of public consultation and we are once again seeking your input. This is the first of two webinars that we'll be holding as part of the consultation process and the second session will take place next Tuesday at 7pm for those who were unable to make it tonight. Tonight's webinar will be recorded and the recording will be made available on our website fingal.ie forward slash Royal Canal Urban Greenway later on this week. This non-statutory public consultation process commenced on May 25th and will run until July 7th and it's very important that we hear your views on our plans. You're invited to make a submission sharing your views on the scheme at consult.fingal.ie. Submissions can be made by individuals or by groups or, such as clubs or associations who may wish to bring their comments together as one and we welcome your views on all aspects of the scheme. We'll begin with our presentation which will take about 30 minutes or so and then we'll move on to a question and answer session. The purpose of tonight is to give you an opportunity to hear from the key people who have been involved in the project and a chance to ask them some questions. If you have a question please enter it in the Q&A box. We'll do our best to make sure we can answer as many of your questions as possible this evening and those that aren't answered will be passed on to the project team. You'll hear from three contributors during tonight's presentation. Paul Carroll is a senior engineer in the planning and strategic infrastructure department with responsibility for transport planning and strategic transport projects and leads the Royal Canal Urban Greenway project. Kian O'Kellicker is a senior executive engineer in the planning and strategic infrastructure department and a member of the Royal Canal Urban Greenway team and Robert Kelly is a director with DBFL who are consultants to Fingal County Council on the Royal Canal Urban Greenway project. Again questions to Paul, Kean and Robert can be typed into the Q&A box and as many as possible will be facilitated. If we encounter any technical issues tonight please bear with us and we'll endeavour to resolve them as quickly as they arise. If there is a break in the presentation for any technical reason you'll see a notification on Twitter where our handle is at Fingal Coco. Before we get into tonight's presentations, I'd like to invite Paul Carroll, who's Senior Engineer in the Planning and Strategic Infrastructure Department, to formally welcome you to tonight's presentation. Thanks, Roisin, and welcome to everyone this evening on a glorious evening um, for tonight's webinar presentation. Um, we're delighted to see so many people here this evening. Um, the Royal Canal Greenway is project that we're all very excited about. Um, in the last, I suppose, in the last year, year and a half since COVID arrived, I think people have really had much more of an enhanced uh, appreciation for local amenities and local outdoor facilities. And I think that's been building up over the last number of years as well in terms of environmental awareness and climate change. And Greenway will be a huge boost to the area. What, what we found, uh, the small number of greenways nationally that have been um, delivered and internationally is that the people who live local to these facilities are the ones that get most benefit by far from them. So they may be designed as, as national routes or tourist routes or whatever they're designed as across different countries, but it's the people who live on the doorstep are there 365 days a year who get the most benefit. So we would see this being first and foremost a local amenity and a local transport route for all ages from, from 8 to 80 hopefully um, in terms of schools, sports clubs and the, the adjacent housing estates. Also an, a, an important commuter route for people working in town or out towards the, the Kildare direction, out towards the Eagle, perhaps. And then finally as part of the wider Dublin Galway um, national route which will in turn form part of a wider network including a number of schemes in Dublin City and, and Fingal along the Fingal coast that we're also bringing through development. So. We're conscious that we have to work to kind of meet a lot of different challenges along this route. We want to work with the local community on this um, and we look forward to hearing your feedback tonight and through the consultation session. So I'd encourage everyone to make a submission through the Fingal, Fingal consultation portal. So thanks very much for being here tonight. I'll pass you back to Roisin. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. So with that over with, let's get on with our first presentation this evening, which is an overview of the project and the public consultation process, where we'll hear from Kian O'Kellicker. Good 
Good evening. My name is Keno Kaleker. I'm the Senior Executive Engineer of Fingal County Council. And I'm going to give a presentation on the Royal Canal Urban Greenway, um, the public consultation process, where we are today, and the next steps going forward. The Royal Canal Urban Greenway will provide a high quality greenway route which will serve Castlenock, Richardstown, Clonsilla Culmine, and the wider Dublin 15 area. The scheme will provide significant benefits to the surrounding community and to future generations. Ultimately, it forms part of the wider Dublin to Galway Greenway route, which will be a national tourist attraction. We previously held an emerging preferred route public consultation in March 2019. Following this, it was agreed to carry out a more detailed assessment of the emerging preferred route around the deep sinking area. This assessment is not complete and we have engaged in a further round of public consultation on our proposals for the scheme. This is a non statutory online public consultation, which means it's not set out in any planning legislation, but it will be regarded as best practice to consult at this stage. The dates are from the 25th of May to the 7th of July 2021. Online information is available at fingold.ie forward slash Royal Canal Urban Greenway and on our consultation portal where submissions can be made. Uh, we're not in a position to hold in-person events due to COVID-19 restrictions. Um, and we'll be unlikely to hold events in the near future. We are publicising the scheme through leaflet drops in the region of 11,000 to households in the Dublin 15 area, letters to impacted landowners, newspaper ads, press releases, use of online media platforms and through our public partnership network. The public engagement will consist of submissions to the content portal. There is also a an address to receive postal submissions available. We're carrying out two live webinars. There's a questionnaire on the consultation portal that once completed will be treated as a submission. Um, other requirements will be determined as the consultation process progresses. An FAQ is also being developed and will to the website once we've assessed a few more submissions. Documents published as part of the, the consultation include engineering drawings, architectural drawings, concept video and images, which show what we want the scheme to look like once we've completed the scheme. Ground investigation report, primarily along the deep sinking area, route options report, public consultation report, and GDG independent feasibility and constraint study. This was an independent study and review of the work carried out by DBFL um, on the preferred route and in the deep sinking area. The scheme extends from the Kildare border in the west to the 12th lock at Castle Knock where it joins the existing scheme which runs towards Ashtown. We've engaged in considerable stakeholder engagement to date, including with Waterways Ireland, the NTA, Dart Plus West, Irish Rail, the Community Guardi, and the Garda Crime Prevention Unit. And as part of this stakeholder engagement, we're undertaking this public consultation. There are considerable benefits from this scheme to the residents of Dublin 15, including improved sustainable transport options. Essentially, we'd be providing a sustainable transport link through the heart of Dublin 15. Safer routes to schools, there are considerable volume of schools along this route, some of whose pupils already use the canal as their route to school. But we'd be providing a, a much improved facility for those users. Links to public transport, in particular, if Dart Plus goes ahead, social inclusion through connectivity, connecting some of the newer areas to the west of Dublin 15 with the heart of Dublin 15 in, in Clonsilla, Blanchardstown, Castlenock. 
promoting recreational activities, promoting physical activity, health and well-being, enhancing and protecting the historic Royal Canal, links to the Greater Dublin Area Cycle Network, which is a network that's been progressed by the NTA in conjunction with the local authorities and which will provide a number of local links. This route would provide the spine for these local routes to link into and fulfilling regional and national sustainable transport objectives. One of the main areas of concern from the 2019 consultation was the north versus south bank between Coolmine and Castleknock along the deep sinking. An independent feasibility and constraint study has been undertaken and the project team have identified considerable constraints to constructing the greenway along the south bank. As you can see from the two images on this slide, proximity to the rail line is one of those constraints. The rail line is held up by retaining walls, some of which, as you can see in the bottom image, have considerable tree growth and vegetation growth within them. For us to come in and start excavating and removing that vegetation is not practical. The monitoring we'd have to undertake to ensure that slippage or subsidence of the rail line didn't occur will be two owners on the project. Um, Robert Kelly, the project director from DBFL, will go through the constraints in, in further detail during his presentation. The next steps for us on the project following this consultation will be to consider and report on the consultation submissions. Um, so we'll be pre preparing a report following the six week consultation process on all the submissions received. This will help us to develop our proposals further for the planning application in quarter four, 2021. The statutory planning process is to be determined following screening for EIA and AA. And this screening will determine whether it's a part eight application or an application to onboard plan all. Part eight application is whereby the project team would apply for planning permission from Fingal County Council and approval would be determined by the elected members. Should the project cross thresholds for EIA and AA, an application to onboard Planola would be required. And this screening process will take place um, following this consultation. Statutory public consultation periods will be required for both of these processes, so there will be a further consultation process when we lodge a planning application. Um, these are the projected timelines for the Royal Canal Urban Greenway. So the project commenced in 2018 and we're now at preferred route public consultation in quarter two, 2021. And as set out following this, we'll do carry out our screening for EIA and AA and determine the, the statutory process required and our preliminary design. Um, I'm going to hand you over to Robert Kelly from DBFL now, and he'll run through some of the aspects I've gone through there in, in more detail. Thank you. Thanks, Kian. So please remember if you have a question for Kian, type it into the Q&A box and send it on to us. We plan to spend around 30 minutes answering your questions at the end of this session. And if your question doesn't feature within the time we have allowed for tonight, please don't worry. As I mentioned before, it'll be passed on to the project team for consideration as the consultation progresses. Our next presentation is from Robert Kelly of DBFL, who's going to describe the scheme in further detail. Over to you, Robert. Good evening, my name is Robert Kelly from DBFL Consulting Engineers and following on from Keane's presentation, I will give you a brief overview of some of the features of the preferred route for the Royal Canal Urban Greenway. The Greenway as shown in the map here will run between the county boundary in the west to the existing section as constructed between Ashtown and Castleknock in the east. The scheme will be approximately eight kilometres in length and will generally follow the northern embankment for the majority of its of its route, with the exception of a crossover section between 
coal mine in Castle Knock. In terms of the western section of the Greenway, it will be approximately three to four metres wide and will be constructed within the existing embankment on the northern side of the canal. So as to preserve a riparian strip between the Greenway and the water's edge. The Greenway will be constructed using materials which are sensitive to the existing rural environment in this area, such as unbound paving materials as illustrated on this image, which is the approach to Packenham Bridge or Barberstown Lane. As the Greenway moves eastwards uh, beyond Hansfield, the Greenway will be four metres in width and will be constructed using a bound pavement as illustrated in this image, which is just to the west of Clancilla Station. As we move east of Coolmine Road, the Greenway will continue along the northern embankment, which is the opposite side to the existing towpath, which at this point is on the southern side of the embankment, immediately just to the north of the existing Minute rail line. The Greenway will be routed along the upper level of the northern embankment so as to preserve and minimise the amount of tree loss in this area before bringing the Greenway through the Brompton open space and then crossing over the canal as shown in the yellow image, uh, yellow line here, um, to the southern side of the canal uh, before proceeding on towards Castleknock. The key features of the, the design as proposed in this area will facilitate connection points onto the Greenway via Delwood Close and then via Brompton Grove and the open space at Brompton. Between these points, the, the Greenway will be fenced and, and enclosed using uh, fencing and also uh, planting. The number of access points through the, 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 on, the on this section um, is, a, is a reduction in the previously indicated number of access points shown in the 2019 proposals, which indicate a potential for six number of access points. In terms of the measures that will be applied through this area to um, minimise the uh, interference and alleviate security concerns of residents, the Greenway will be established on a lower level than the existing embankment to maximise vertical separation to adjacent residential properties in Delwood and Brompton. Fencing will also be provided in conjunction with the fence of planting as shown on the left of this image here. Alternatives were considered um, through this section, a number of alternatives were considered and primarily the, the main alternative suggested by um, um, participants in the last consultation was to route the greenway along the southern embankments adjacent to the rail line and along the existing towpath. It was considered that this option would have significant environmental impacts and as such the preferred route will continue along the northern embankment. The image here presents uh, the existing environment from the canal facing westwards towards Kirkpatrick Bridge and as you can see is a heavily vegetated and, and natural environment. If a greenway was to be constructed on the southern side, significant structural intervention would be required, which would consist of a cantilevered structure extending over the existing water and which would require the removal of the trees on the southern embankment which will result in a significant visual and environmental impact. In terms of the benefits of the preferred route in comparison to the alternative option on the southern embankment, these are summarised in the slide shown under integration, constructability, environment, safety and economy. It's, it's considered that the northern embankment offers greater potential for integration as there are additional opportunities for permeability and access points on the northern embankment, which cannot be possible on the southern side, owing to the proximity to the rail line. This would restrict the number of access points between Coolmine Road and Castlenock Road, which is a, which is a 1.5 kilometre stretch. In terms of constructability, the southern embankment would require considerable and significant restrictions to be borne in mind when constructing the solution adjacent to the rail line and also the canal. This would require 
works to be undertaken at night when the rail line is not in operation and will also require the closure of the canal for approximately six months as well as the towpath. The works on the northern embankment of preferred route could take place during normal working hours and would not have an impact on the rail line or the canal. In terms of environment, I touched on the loss of vegetation and the entire removal of trees between the existing towpath and the rail line and those beneath the existing towpath and the water's edge, which would have a significant visual and ecological impact on the canal. The northern embankment requires the removal of trees also, but the routing of the, 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 the preferred route on the upper level of the embankment has been cited as such so as to minimise and preserve a level of, of trees between the greenway and the canal. In terms of safety, as I mentioned before, in integration with the lack of opportunities to provide access points between Coomine Road and Castlenock Road in the southern option, this will lead to greater potential for antisocial behaviour, resulting in safety and security issues for greenway users. The preferred route, which has been developed in consultation with Angarda Siakana Crime Prevention Units, includes measures to protect and ensure the security of adjacent residential properties, including fencing, defensive planting, and also um, separation of the greenway as it runs through the Brompton open space to um, minimise potential uh, privacy issues through that area. In terms of economy, which is one other factor that's been considered as part of a multi-criteria assessment, the, the Southern Embankment solution would be more costly, but in terms of the capital costs required to construct it owing to the various constraints, and also in terms of ongoing maintenance because of the access um, limitations. The Northern Embankment would be a more economical option in terms of co construction cost and, and ongoing maintenance also. So in terms of the preferred route and addressing some of the concerns raised in the previous consultation, the following mitigation measures are proposed. The greenway level will be lowered to the rear of properties in Delwood and Brompton to maximise vertical separation and ensure privacy. Visual screening and defensive planting would also be introduced. Fencing and screening of the greenway through the Brompton open space would also be proposed and the number of connections onto the greenway will be reduced to three in number. Parking, a parking management scheme will be developed by Fingal County Council Operations Department to uh, address concerns relating to park and ride adjacent to the Greenway and the landmark bridge crossing of the canal has been altered to maximise separation to properties in Roselawn. And tree loss while will be required on the Northern Bank and replacement planting will be proposed as part of a landscaping scheme. And finally for me now just an image um, east of, of Castlenock Road, which shows, the, which shows the Greenway routing along the southern embankment um, between the 12th Lock and Granite Bridge. And as with previous sections, um, it will be a familiar wide Greenway constructed of a round uh, pavement. That's it for me now, and I'd welcome any questions you might have later. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Uh, a reminder, if you have any questions for Robert or for any of our other panellists, please do type them into the Q&A box. I can see a lot of questions coming in here and we're looking forward to answering them. As I said, we'll get through as many of them as we can between now and 8pm. Before we begin the Q&A, we'd like to just show you a short video. This is a virtual walkthrough of what the Royal Canal Urban Greenway will look like and may help you to imagine the space and understand exactly what it will feel like to enjoy this amenity when it's available. Um, I'd ask Sean to pop that video up now when you're ready. Royal Canal Urban Greenway within Fingal County Council is the final say of the Royal Canal Greenway that requires planning approval. The Greenway will connect the River Liffey in Dublin city centre to the River Shannon in Clundara County Longford and will ultimately form part of the Dublin to Galway Greenway. The scheme will connect to the Kildare County Council section of the Greenway in the west at the county boundary. The 
western section of the scheme will follow the existing canal towpath and will be constructed within the existing northern embankment. The western section will be constructed using materials that are sensitive to the rural character and environment of this area. The Greenway will provide a safe and attractive route for pedestrians, cyclists and other canal users such as anglers, which is segregated from vehicular traffic. Signal controlled crossings will be provided for Greenway users at junctions with roads such as Barberstown Lane. The Greenway will offer multiple opportunities for transport interchange, particularly at train stations such as Clonsilla Station. The scheme will be constructed to preserve and enhance the Royal Canal's protected status, including existing bridges along the route such as Caledon Bridge. This includes the use of different forms of construction such as boardwalks to protect underlying ecological habitats. The Greenway will continue on the northern side of the canal, east of Coolmine Road, to provide greater levels of security for Greenway users and enhance connectivity between existing communities and the Royal Canal, as well as Castle Knock and Coolmine train stations. The Greenway will be situated on the upper level of the northern embankment to minimise tree removal and the visual impact of the scheme on the canal. New fencing and screening will be provided to provide added security to adjacent residential properties. A new bridge is proposed to cross an historic quarry area on the northern embankment. An access point will be provided at Delwood Close to enhance permeability and connectivity. The scheme will provide opportunities for users to access Brompton and Roselawn estates. The canal will cross the canal over the architecturally designed pedestrian and cycle bridge. The bridge will respect existing uses along the canal and existing and future operations on the Dublin to Maynooth rail line.
The Greenway continues on the southern side of the Royal Canal, past Castlenock Station, and connects with the existing Castlenock section of the Royal Canal Greenway. Fingal County Council would welcome your feedback on the for the Royal Canal Urban Greenway. Apologies to anybody who might have had some slight difficulty in viewing that video. We've had a little bit of feedback available to view on the website. So fingal.ie forward slash Royal Canal Urban Greenway, uh, where you can watch that video again if you'd like to get the opportunity to view it from start to finish uh, when you have an opportunity. So with that, let's switch on all the microphones of our panelists and move to the Q&A. As I said, we've lots of questions coming in and we're looking forward to answering them. I'm going to take the first question now and it's for Paul Carroll. Paul, when will the Greenway be ready to use? Thanks, Roshan. Um, I suppose at the moment we're we're at the preferred route stage. We would be aiming to get a planning application ready for the autumn of this year. And really, as Keane, I think, mentioned in his presentation, um, it'll either be a part eight planning application, which means it will stay with Fingal County Council and the councillors will vote on it. That process takes three to four months, so we, we could be in the position to have a, a vote on that at the end, at the end of this year. Um, if it, if it uh, meets certain thresholds and ends up being an application to onboard Planola, it's a much longer process and that could take up to a year. But if we assume that it's going to be a part eight, we would, there could be a vote on it by the end of this year to go through detailed design and procurement in 2022 and we could be on site with this in 2023 and there would be um, 12 to 18 months construction minimum along the route. So um, if it goes to the board, then it'll be it'll be you could add six months onto that time frame. So this is this is a it is a long and, uh, you know, it's a careful process. I suppose we, we try to take our, our time in it as much as we can to make sure that we get everything right and that we have time to have these consultation sessions. Thanks, Thanks Rosh. Paul. Um, so my second question now, I'm going to pass over to Keen O'Kelliker. Keen, why was the Atkins report not implemented, which uh, recommended the South Bank route? Um, the Atkins report, just for those who aren't familiar with it, was published in 2012 and was a high level feasibility and constraint study, which largely looked at the South Bank. That particular study highlighted a number of considerable constraints to constructing a greenway on the South Bank, including the proximity to the rail line, the risk of embankment failure through the construction process, which would have raised concerns with Irish Rail, and I believe that that's highlighted in the report. Um, the location, type and condition of the existing in embankment, uh, particularly the vegetation, which is probably adding a lot of stability to it, the existing tree line and that. The narrowness of the path was identified. The steep gradient to Kirkpatrick Bridge at Coolmine train station was identified. And the slow and difficult construction that would take place to construct a greenway on the southern embankment based on their proposals. So the proposals in the Atkins report identified that their proposals will be slow and difficult to build. Um, they also declared at one stage in the report that there are sections of it that are inaccessible to plant, construction plant, which would cause significant difficulties to any project. Um, I don't envisage Irish Rail would give us um, ownership or possession of a rail line for a considerable period of time to, to overcome those kind of difficulties. All the Atkins options looked at in that report required a cantilever at some stage of their construction, which would require horizontal stabilization. In other words, anchors into the railway embankment to help stabilize the cantilever structure. Um, that was similar to what DBFL looked at and what GDD, D, GDG looked at in their independent study recently. 
Um, Irish Rail would not be in favour of us anchoring under the rail line. They would not be able to provide us with guarantees that those anchors would not be severed at some time. And our designers and ourselves could not give any guarantee that there wouldn't be subsidence to the rail line while installing those anchors. Um, you know, and in summary, the Atkins report declared that, that their preferred option was extremely difficult to build. And our project team agree with them. And as the project has developed, we have come to the opinion and our consultants have come to the opinion that those con constraints are not surmountable. And the measures we'd have to put in place to try and construct something on the on the South Bank will be too onerous on any construction project. So what's feasible sometimes in engineering terms in an office in a desk type study, when looked at in further detail in, in the real world for the want of a better term, is not feasible. You know, or not practical to you to use a better term. Now that that report was in 2012. You know, the project has moved on considerably since then. That's it's almost 10 years old. We agree with the constraints that were identified in that report and having looked at them further. We have come to the conclusion that the North Bank is the option. And that those constraints on the Southern Bank will be too difficult for us to overcome um, and progress the project. So th that's where the Atkins report sits at present. It's, it's a report that did what it was supposed to do at the time. It's the start of a project to do a feasibility study. And routes and opinions change as further detail is examined and comes to light. So um, I hope that um, helped clear up some of the Atkins um, report issues. Thanks, Keen. That's very helpful clarification. I'm going to move on to Robert Kelly now. And Robert, we have a question here uh, regarding security. So, what security measures will be put in place to protect the Brompton neighbourhood should open access from the green area to the canal be granted? Okay, am I, am I live there? Sorry, Sean. Yep, thanks. Thanks, Roisin. Yep. Um, so, so as I touched on my presentation there, um, so as you move through the Brompton area, there's a couple of measures that have been added to the scheme. Um, the proposals as presented originally in 2019 showed a, a, an open access onto onto the greenway. What we're what we're showing now is are the two access points very specifically identified, um, and between those access points the greenway will be fenced on either side and planting will be provided as well to further kind of uh, protect, respect the privacy of, of, of residential properties in that area. Um, so really those, those measures and, and, and those further west to, to the rear of Dalwood are kind of been developed in consultation with, with, with Angarish Economic Crime Prevention Unit. Um, but as I say, the green area alignment as well has been altered a small bit as well, a relation in proximity to Brompton Court to bring it further away from the residential properties there as well. So, Thanks Robert. Um, and I have another question for Keen here. On the consultation drawings, Keen, there don't appear to be any accesses from the Greenway to the Barnwell Estates, which are part of the new Hansfield development. The person asking the question has said the current proposed Greenway route is cutting off residents who are part of the new Hansfield development area, and they'd like to know why is that? Yeah, as part of the Hansfield development, the developers were conditioned to agree an access point to the canal towpath with Irish Rail, who are the landowners there. To date, that hasn't been resolved, and I'm aware that there are desire lines for residents um, through private property, through Irish Rail property, and they are making their own routes through areas onto that canal to access schools, train stations, amenities, and all that. The land isn't in our control at present, but the Greenway would give us the opportunity to resolve that issue between Irish Rail and the developer. So it will be our intention as we take the design forward through the summer, that we will engage with both those parties uh, and look at the, the best solution there. Um, we're aware they were conditioned in planning. However, it's very hard for a planning authority to enforce a condition on two separate landowners if they can come to an agreement. So the condition was that they, they would agree. That obviously hasn't occurred yet, and we'll be looking into that further over the summer months. Thank you, Gain. 
Um, so I have another question here and I'm going to pass to Robert. If the Greenway was to go on the South Bank, would it require alterations at Kirkpatrick Bridge and what impact would that have on the bats that it roost under that bridge? Yeah, well, I suppose bats, the first thing uh, no, to note is yeah, bat roosts were recorded um, in Kirkpatrick Bridge, which itself is a protected structure. Um, and as people from the locality would be familiar, there's a quite a narrow entrance onto the towpath at present. Um, from Kilmine Road and and the entrance uh, directly adjacent to the to the entrance to the to the to the train station, so really our potential to to widen um, the existing towpath is 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 restricted by the rail line. So any widening would have to take place on the opposite side of the towpath, which is Kirkpatrick Bridge and the existing pedestrian bridge. So yes, modifications would be required to Kirkpatrick Bridge, and then by by consequence, there could be potential for impact on bat roosts there. Thanks, Robert. Um, so moving on from that to talk a little bit more about how this project connects to others. We have a question here that I'm going to pass to Paul. Paul, how do future projects aim to connect with the Greenway through active travel measures? Thanks, Frank Shane. Um, yeah, there's a lot there's a lot going on in this area, I think, in terms of um, we have a programme of works called the Fingal Capital Programme. It's a three year uh, rolling uh, programme of, of different projects across the, uh, Fingal County Council and transportation and greenways forms a significant element of that. Um, so the, the the Royal Canal Greenway would be a key part of that. Um, in terms of the Dublin 15 area, the other projects that we would have going, we have the Ongar Barnhill Link Road, which would be um, kind of north south with a new crossing over the railway line, linking down into those uh, Barnhill LAP lands. Um, and that's got planning permission that will be going to construction in the next 12 months. Kellystown Road, we had a consultation on that recently and um, that's in the earlier stages and um, some some way off uh, planning planning permission yet, but that'll form another link and a, a significant road improvement for that fast developing area. There's also a, a multi-agency project involving ourselves, South Dublin County Council, Fulch Ireland, Waterways Ireland and a, a number of other bodies. Dublin City Council to connect up the Royal and Grand Canal and can create a kind of a looped uh, network along the Grand Canal and Royal Canal and that will um, that will be brought forward as well. South Dublin County Council had a consultation on that uh, two or three months ago and we will be bringing that forward in the coming years as well. Um, in terms of um, more active travel and kind of functional I suppose function Paul, I think we've lost your sound there, if you wouldn't mind just checking. Sorry, yeah, I don't know. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. That's all right. Um, so just as you were getting into, into the active travel plan overall yeah, there, we lost you. Sorry, yeah, in, in, we have a new active travel department in Fingal County Council and we work closely with them. We're in the planning department there. They're in active travel. We work quite closely with them, as you can imagine. Um, they'll be looking at network improvements in the Ongar and Little Pace area, including looking at a lot of junction upgrades to kind of bring the existing off-road tracks that are there at the moment for cyclists and for pedestrians through a lot of those busy kind of roundabout junctions. Um, and they'll also be looking at then uh, new cycle routes. There's a, a five year plan. It's what is known as it's an NTA funded um, program of, of a range of projects. There's 22 projects across Fingal and there's a number of them in the Dublin 15 area, including um, Blanchardstown to Castleknock to the Phoenix Park and Blanchardstown to Carpenterstown to the Phoenix Park. So um, as well as that, then we have the Dart Plus scheme, which um, we'll be linking into through our um, Tonsilla to Damastown cycle, cycle route, which will link from Tonsilla Station up through um, the residential areas there crossing the N3 and linking up to the Damastown employment zone and potentially a future talk of Greenway. So so there's a lot going on there and um, we also have the bus connect scheme then tying into Blanchardstown town centre and there's high quality uh, cycle and walking facilities there as well as you know uh, really good public transport interchange so there's a lot going on we'd like to see it happening really really early and um, these things take time unfortunately but 
I suppose we can reassure people that there is a, a kind of a vision there and we're all working away on it and we're working closely with our leagues in um, the National Transport Authority and in um, Dublin City Council to help deliver that. Thanks, Roshan. Thanks, Paul. That was a good view of the overall picture. Um, I'm going to pass the next question, question to Keane O'Callagher. Keane, will Fengal be installing kissing gates, styles, or other barriers that might disadvantage cyclists along the Royal Canal Urban Greenway? Um, there will be a requirement for barriers along the route. We haven't decided the form that those would take yet, and we'll have to discuss with with Waterways Ireland their requirements, maintenance requirements in terms of the canal itself. We are aware that kissing gates do provide issues for cyclists and particularly those with cargo bikes on a school run and all those kind of issues um, can be quite frustrating to a cyclist to come across a series of them and have to dismount if they're with younger cyclists or whatever and and pass bikes over these types of structures. There, there are other innovations happening um, around Europe in terms of chicaning and things like that and, and different shape barriers which allow a, a better ease of access. However, this is not prim just a cycle route, this is also for pedestrians. So we also have to consider pedestrian comfort along the route also. And, you know, particularly in the vicinity of schools where you might have some very young users, that 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 element will have to be considered as well. So um, that design detail again will be ironed out over the course of the coming months in advance of a planning application. So. Thanks, Keen. Um, so I have a question now about noise. What will the noise impact of the Greenway being uh, constructed on either bank be? Uh, Robert, I'd ask you to take that one if you don't mind. OK, Roisin, thanks. Yeah, so I suppose just in terms of, of um, noise as regards to construction impact, um, I probably touched on it in my slides there where in relation to the Southern Embankment, um, as we'd be required to to work, I suppose, in times when the rail line is not operational, there would be a lot of noise associated with, with the construction works at night time. Um, so obviously there would be that would last for a number of months and um, we'd estimate between eight and 12 months. Uh, and obviously, as, as well as being a, a, an a inconvenience for, for residents in the surrounding area, there would obviously be a concern about ecological impacts um, associated with that noise, particularly with relation to bats, um, who, as you know, are nocturnal animals, as, as are some of the other species in the Royal Canal. Um, the construction on the northern embankment then would um, could take place um, during a normal wor working day or working hours as such. So while there would be noise associated with the construction works, um, any contractor who would be appointed to carry out the works would obviously be obliged to provide associated protective measures to reduce that noise. But crucially, this would be during the daytime rather than at night time. So. Thanks, Robert. Yeah. Um, Paul, I'm going to come back to you now with a question relating to some of the um, linkage into other systems that we talked about a moment ago. Would the proposed plans change following the DART Plus traffic changes that include removal of controlled toucan crossings over bridges, which would no longer see motor traffic? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're working closely with the DART Plus team. Um, that's a huge infrastructure project and obviously significant sections of it are co-located with our uh, Greenway scheme. So there will be there will be some tweaking of our own scheme and um, of their scheme as well as we as we work towards um, getting a, a solution for that, that's compatible for both projects together. So um, yeah, there will be some minor changes and we are working closely with with um, Dark Plus and their designers. Thanks, Paul. We have another question now from a cyclist, I assume, about uh, how we will provide segregation between cyclists and pedestrians along the Royal Canal Urban Greenway. And they've asked, how is the route designed to avoid collisions between cyclists and pedestrians? Robert, would you mind taking that question, please? Yeah, no problem. So I suppose the, 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 the as with a, a lot of greenways, it's proposed that it would be shared between pedestrians and cyclists and, and, and it would not be segregated. Um, I suppose the design intent is that it's 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 a calmed environment um, and that it wouldn't necessarily be um, constructed to facilitate cyclists traveling at, at high speed. So really cyclists would be um, encouraged through various measures to yield to pedestrians, particularly in areas where there's you know high instances of, of 
of uh, more vulnerable users like school children, etc., uh, on scooters, etc. So, um, in terms of the design options that we have there, really, we would be looking at kind of the alignment, the vertical alignment and horizontal alignment of the greenway to 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 I suppose minimise the potential for cyclists to to travel at high speeds, particularly in areas of conflict, as I said. But in in essence, it's proposed that it would be a shared facility. Thanks, Robert. Um, so, Keen, we have a question here from a uh, concerned resident about. Do you envisage any compulsory purchase of land to facilitate the North Bank route and what would be the cost of those CPOs? Um, I don't have a figure for that at the minute. We would envisage some CPO along the route. Um, as far as I'm aware, we are not traversing any properties between Castleknock and Cool Mine. Um, there's a section of it after Sheepmore Lane, which is being constructed by a developer. Um, and and there are some further elements out west to the west of the scheme. Um, Robert actually might be able to come in just to confirm that. Um, in terms of, um, I think, Keen, you're referring to possibly the section between Hansfield and Clonsilla. Um, there might be a requirement for um, some widening to the north there where we are going along the existing towpath, I think. So um, I think there'll be specific discussions with that affected landowner. Thank you both. Um, so, Paul, as this is the second phase of the consultation and the preferred route is the north side of the canal, will the southern side still be a possibility should the public overwhelmingly seek that? OK, um, so in, in the previous consultation, there was a there was a, a large number of submissions asking us to look at the south bank um, again. So in the intervening period since then, since 2019, we, we undertook more, much more detailed analysis. We employed specialists, geotechnical engineers to look at it. We had more liaison with Irish Rail and we actually undertook um, ground investigation works there to you know, really establish what was in the ground there. I think Kean and Robert have both dealt with the constraints and the challenges there and that has all com culminated in the decision that the South Bank is not a feasible route from our point of view. So there, there, there'll be no greenway on, on the South Bank. Um, the North Bank is the route. So um, there's too many constraints, there's too many risks there, huge risks working adjacent to that, uh, that railway line. And apart from that, there's, there's also significant environmental impacts in doing so in terms of um, the impact on the canal and the impact on the trees along there. So <clears throat> it's set out in, in, in much more detail than perhaps we can go into tonight in the consultation material that's online. I encourage anyone to to have a look at that. Um, we are going to put up one or two other um, more kind of brief kind of digestible documents to kind of deal with the North Bank versus South Bank option. But I think um, as far as Fingal County Council is concerned, um, we, we don't have an option we don't have any um, intention of providing the greenway along along the South Bank. Thanks, Paul. Uh, we are coming quite close for time, so I'm actually going to put the next question um, to yourself and to Keen, and you can decide who would like to come in on it. But who will benefit from permeability um, provided by three access laneways between Cool Mine and Castle Knock versus access points at both ends of the section? Um, I, I can take that and maybe maybe Kane can come in as well. Um, Thanks. Briefly, um, I suppose who will benefit is people living locally and the people using the, the, the facility to, to have uh, ease of access to the facility, but also to one of the key drivers behind creating that level of accessibility from the Greenway to the residential areas is that it creates a much safer um, comfortable uh, facility for people to use and importantly it creates that perception of being a safe and comfortable facility to use and I suppose if you'd look um, a couple of kilometres down the route towards the Ashtown section of the Greenway um, along by Rathbourne and Royal Canal Park you have a really kind of open area with with large number of access points along the route and that is a really safe comfortable place that you see people 
of every age, every uh, every physical ability, people in 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 uh, pushing buggies, people cycling, walking, jogging, um, mobility impaired. You know, everyone kind of can enjoy that. So I think that's what international practice shows. That's what practice shows in in more local schemes. That the more you open up an area, um, it removes any temptation for any kind of um, any kind of undesirable or antisocial behaviour to take place there. Thanks, Paul. Uh, we're coming very close to time now, and unfortunately, we have a lot of questions that we haven't got to. Just to reiterate, the questions that haven't been dealt with this evening will be brought back to the project team. Uh, we'll look at them and we'll use them in developing our frequently asked questions, which will be placed up on our website, which again is fingal.ie forward slash Royal Canal Green Urban Greenway. Um, if your question hasn't been answered, please uh, check back there in a few days, and we will also be using those questions to inform the session that we have next week on the 8th um, of June. To everyone who did submit questions and comments tonight, thank you very much for logging in. Uh, we hope you found the session beneficial and enjoyed the webinar. As I said, it has been recorded and it'll be uploaded shortly onto the web page also. On that web page, you'll also find a lot of additional information about the project and it'll give you the opportunity to make a submission. Please remember the deadline for submissions is before 23.59 hours on the 7th of July. Submissions can be made online through our consultation portal at consult.fingal.ie. They can also be made by post if you'd rather do it in a non-technical way. Thank you very much um, to Paul, Kean, and Robert for joining us this evening um, and for giving us so much to consider in relation to this project. Uh, Paul, would you like to offer any final words before we close tonight? Um, I suppose just to thank everyone for, for joining us this evening and um, please make your submissions. At the end of the consultation period, we'll go through all those submissions and we'll, we'll create reports, including responses around the, the main issues raised. Um, and we'll present that and we'll publish that to have that available to anyone who wants to see it. And just to say thanks to all the team here tonight and thanks to everyone for all the, all the questions. Um, and we look forward to working with the community. There's another uh, webinar this day week for anyone um, who, who wants to ask more questions or uh, for anyone who couldn't make it tonight. And Paul, just a reminder for people who are on the call, what are the next steps in the planning process? Um, the next steps, I suppose, we will um, review all the submissions at the end of this process and we will then um, nail down, I suppose, the final design of the scheme. That allows us then to screen it for environmental impact assessment or not. That that will decide the actual planning process, either a Fingal County Council Part A planning process or an application to onboard Planola later on in the autumn. So that's that's really the next key step for us. Thanks, Paul, and thank you also to our production team who've been so helpful tonight, as well as our other presenters. Please don't forget to make your submissions. We really want to hear what you have to say about the Royal Canal Urban Greenway, and we'll be reading your submissions as they come in. Um, until we get to meet again next week, goodbye and take care. <laughs>